morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. So uh, we've got L2 number three in the shop right now. And uh, we're adjusting the stripper plates on its corn head. I'm gonna take that off. So my stripper plates, I wanted an inch and three eighths gap down here and I wanted an inch and a half gap up here. So I've got two sockets. This socket's gonna go up here and this one's gonna go down here, which I've already adjusted. It's a little tight, I need to back it off a little bit. But the reason we adjust our stripper plates is because our stock, our stock of corn, when it goes up, we want it tight through here, so when it jerks down, it pulls the ear off. But we want it a little looser back here so that it continues on to suck the stock through trouble free. So, <clears throat> They actually had these pretty widened out. These are actually pretty simple to adjust. Well, that one, that retainer tab was already off. So we just simply take our impact, hold our socket in here. When you run this bolt in, it moves the stripper plate over. like on each one of these somebody has already just widened one side out so that'll work just fine that's that's close enough so I'm gonna go through and do the rest of these like that um, L2 number one is out of commission as of right now uh, the cylinder drive belt somehow mysteriously ran off and uh, when it ran off, it wrapped up around the uh, cylinder drive variable speed pulley. And when it done that, it grabbed the hydraulic line that raises and lowers the head and tore it all, also off. Um, actually, it didn't tear it completely off. Um, what had happened was it pulled it in and it, it uh, stressed the uh, the one flare fitting on the end of the steel hydraulic line and made it leak and it actually unthreaded partial or broke it loose the hydraulic fitting that fed the cylinder right under it so i was able to tighten the, the fitting back up raise the head up and get the prop put in and we were able to get the combine home so it's sitting out here right now it needs a new cylinder drive belt because it destroyed that one and it needs some new plumbing under there so I'm gonna have to get L2 number three here going, get it to the field. I, I took it out last night, I made around with it, found some minor issues that I wanted to fix, like the tailing side of everything was completely plugged up. Wasn't the auger elevator, it was inside the shoe that was all plugged up. So I brought that back, I cleaned that out. I didn't even realize it when it was here. You don't think to look at some of that stuff. It's kind of in a hurry to get it to the field after L2 number one went down, so I checked the oil in it, checked the vital stuff, and took it to the field. And uh, I guess that's what happens when you get in a hurry, but stuff happens. So uh, I'm gonna get these adjusted, get this, these snouts put back on, and uh, we'll take this one to the field and we'll get some video picking corn with it. So I probably should explain exactly what a stripper plate does um, for our younger viewers and uh, people that aren't really familiar with farm equipment. So the idea of the stripper plate is essentially to strip the ear of corn off of the stalk. So when the rolls under here suck the corn stalk down through the head, the butt of the ear comes down on the, onto the stripper plate and it hits right here or, up, or anywhere through here, wherever it gets sucked through. When it comes down, and it hits, that jerks the stalk out of the butt of the ear, and the ear corn lays in a gathering chain, 
The gathering chain drags it up and throws it in the auger, and the auger takes it across and throws it into the thrasher housing of the combine where the feeder beater grabs it, throws it into the uh, cylinder, and that's where the shelling happens. So uh, just a quick uh, visual representation of how it happens. Um, I know when, we're, when I've got you on the steering column and my camera mount, and we're running four and a half miles an hour, it's kind of hard to see exactly how that happens. So that's how that happens, but multiple times per second, really fast. And the thing is, when, when, it's, when it's tough conditions out and the stalk's kind of wet, it makes that harder to jerk that ear off that stalk. So that's when, when it comes down and hits, It'll come down and it'll hit like this and it'll break the butt of the ear and that's where you get your head shell from. So, and also if these stripper plates aren't tight enough, this ear, if it's small enough, it'll pass on down through, the rolls will chew it up and you'll also get head shell that way. So, uh, the tighter you keep the stripper plates, the better because it catches more inside the center of that ear also and it keeps it from head shelling. Another thing that really helps is if you have a variety of corn that keeps the shucks on because those shucks act as a bag when that ear hits and it kind of cushions and it also keeps them kernels of corn inside that bag until it gets up in the combine and then it can be thrashed. So a little food for thought there.